the accumulation of snow over the years creates a lot of weight. Whoa! So, uh, Claire Udale once again, and we're in Iceland. And a lot of the things we do in Iceland, I think, revolve around the glaciers. And I think they're the most fascinating part of geography for me, certainly, like glaciation is, is fascinating. And this landscape is really like what Britain was like. The, uh, during the last ice age. During the last ice age, so that's like 10,000 years ago? Just over 10,000. How a glacier works, some very, very slow physics, but it's basically, I always go, I always just leave it at, well, it's Newton's law of gravitation, isn't it? It's just water coming down, but it's a bit more complicated than that, so. It is, it is. It's on a much bigger scale than most people imagine. The, the thing that people find hardest to get their heads around is the, the, the scale and the speed of what's going on, because mm. it is quite a slow system. So the, the snow goes in at the top of the glacier, so on the mountains up at the top, and as that snows and snows and snows, that builds up and builds up, and eventually that compresses and squishes down into and forms the ice of the glacier. So when they very, very first form, you get a scoop on the side of a mountain, usually on the north facing side, and that's a corrie. And as the snow and ice builds up there, after two years of there being permanent ice cover because of Coriolis force, spinning of the earth, that ice will start to move and that will start to, to grind away and eventually it will fill up and then it will overflow the lip of the Corrie and start flowing down the valley. Which Is that why it's called a Corrie? Because of Coriolis force? I don't know, I thought about that. Oh, that's interesting. Possibly, maybe. Possibly. <laughs> well, no, let us know. <laughs> and it'll start flowing down the valley that will then become the U-shaped valley when the glacier has gone and disappeared. I started making my own animation for this, but I figured actually using a FET sim, I use FET sims all the time for teaching physics, but there's a FET sim for glaciers that you can go ahead and actually play about yourself and you can play about with all the parameters like how much snowfall there is, the average air temperature, interestingly enough, I figured that might be a bit better for showing you how the glaciers work. There's a FET sim for just about everything, so if you just Google PHET and then the name of the simulation you're kind of looking for, you're bound to find something. They're made by the University of Colorado and I think they're absolutely excellent. Now obviously every year a different amount of snow will fall depending on temperatures and whatnot so the glacier will move a slightly different amount however because so much is melting and breaking off all of these icebergs have broken off this summer um, so much is disappearing from it to us it actually looks like it's moving the other way and it's actually moving towards us that zone at the top is known as the zone of accumulation but in Iceland you don't always get the corries you get ice caps so 10% of Iceland is covered in ice all of the time and they're burying mountains hundreds of meters sometimes up to a kilometre thick and that's the zone of accumulation several glaciers coming down all at once. You know why you have these? Personal protective gear on, got a harness and crampons for walking and an ice axe which is really just in case someone else has to rescue me. There's lots of kind of very deep crevices. So if you do come to Iceland, don't just think that looks very inviting and go ahead and walk on the glacier. Wait or get yourself booked on a glacier tour that can actually take you with a trained guide. As the ice goes in, pushes it down because of gravity, it's going to flow down the valley. Uh, in the case of the one we visited towards the sea, but obviously it isn't always the case, just downhill essentially. But our glaciers are not just ice cubes, they're full of sediment, they're dirty. And the best analogy that I've got for that is imagine you've got two ice cubes on a tabletop. One's full of gravel, one's clean. If you rub them both on the tabletop, the clean one will just create a puddle and the one full of gravel will eventually wear out a groove if you start doing it the same way. Mm. Uh, and that's pretty much what's going on. You've got a lump of ice full of bits of rock, full of boulders. You've got abrasion on the sides, abrasion on the bottom. You get plucking where the rocks are, larger rocks are in the bottom. As the ice comes over the top, it melts around the rock with friction. A bit like sticking your tongue to a lamppost, eventually that freezes again, pulls the rock off oh, yeah, yeah. into the main part of the glacier. So they're very, very dirty. So this sediment is carried down the glaciers to the end, which is known as the snout or the zone of, of ablation. So the top is the zone of accumulation. The bottom is the zone of ablation. And the ice is black because of the last eruption of Katla, which is the uh, volcano in the ice cap there. I hate to say it because I've been love Americans, but there are some Americans here who are making a real joke of global warming, even though they can see it in action. And I think that's really Trump's America right now, isn't it? 
um, so the end is the snout, which is the zone of inflation. And the sediment is dropped at the end of the glacier. Again, the best way of trying to think about that is if you're in a supermarket and you're putting your stuff at the top of the conveyor belt, the stuff is being carried down the conveyor belt and you're not taking it off the bottom. So it's basically carried down, it's building up and building up and building up. It's exactly what happens in a glacier. The sediment just builds up and builds up at the end of the glacier where it's stopped and that's called a moraine. It's a ridge of sediment and at the end it's called a terminal moraine. Any sediment that lands on top of the glacier with rock falls or landslides, that gets pushed to the sides because the middle of the glacier moves faster than the outsides and they're called lateral moraines. Then if you get two glaciers meeting, those lateral moraines will join and you get black bands down the middle of the glacier and that's called a medial moraine. Our guide was just talking about the density of the ice changing as it goes further down, it gets bluer as it goes further down because it's more dense, but it's all about refraction. These chip points are very nice to try and show refraction. In here, I don't know if the camera can maybe see it, those little rainbows. Well, as white light is dispersed into all the colours of the visible spectrum. Some good physics. So I think as well that ice is uh, having all of the air actually kind of squeezed out of it. He compared it to like a snowball, compacting a snowball, squeezing the air out until you've got a kind of, well, just ice, no gases dissolved in it, and it'll have better optical properties. Maybe a lower refractive index and the light will change speed less. Well, that's for another lecture. I've got a video about refraction somewhere. They do also have lots of cracks in them. These cracks are called crevasses. And it's a bit like if you have a Mars bar, made to love my food analogies. <laughs> yeah. If you bend the Mars bar, the nugget and the toffee will bend and the chocolate on the top will crack. And that's as the glacier is moving over bumps in the ground or turning a corner, that chocolate on the top will crack. So you get these big cracks in the glacier, which are called crevasses. Awesome. It's glaciation in a nutshell. Thank you. So a lot of moulins that you find like this, they end up becoming ice caves. So they're kind of like rivers, they've been described like rivers of ice before, but they're much, much slower moving. And the hardest thing I think to get your heads around for glaciation is that they're always moving forwards, but because of climate change they are melting backwards. And I think that is the most difficult thing to kind of understand and get your heads around.